Citizens speak out in countries as diverse as Bahrain, Belarus, Bosnia, Egypt, Georgia, Greece, Libya, Mexico, Sudan, Syria, US and Yemen. People continue to gather in solidarity as they call for political and social reform to improve living conditions for themselves and loved ones. In the US, a controversial Wisconsin state law eliminating collective bargaining rights for state government employee unions and requiring union members to pay more for health care and pensions was voided by a judge who found that lawmakers violated the state's open Open meetings law in its passage. An Egyptian court sentenced former housing minister Ahmed Al Maharabi to five years in prison for having misused his power to amass wealth at the expense of the public. Serbian President Boris Tadic announced that Bosnian Serb General Ratko Matic, who has been sought for the past 16 years in association with war crimes, has been arrested and will be extradited to the UN Tribunal in The Hague, the Netherlands, as part of an effort to assist in reconciliation from the Bosnian conflict. In Georgia, police used water cannons, rubber bullets and tear gas to clear a square of protesters just after midnight Thursday, May 26th, with one protester and a policeman who were killed when they were hit by cars as people fled the scene, and 40 who were hospitalized, including one journalist. Both Russia and the European Union have spoken out against the violence used to disperse the protesters. On Thursday, South Sudan's president, Salva Kiir, called upon the northern Sudanese government to remove its forces from the disputed oil-rich town of Abia, while affirming that there would be no return to civil war over the town. James Koch Rui, humanitarian affairs minister for South Sudan, announced Friday that already 150,000 people have fled Abia and surrounding regions due to the violence. Northern Sudan negotiator Al Dudiri Mohamed Ahmed stated that he hoped discussions to resolve the dispute would begin immediately, mediated by the African Union. Former Belarusian presidential candidates Nikolai Statkovich and Dmitry Us, who sought to challenge the country's autocratic rule, have received multiple year sentences in prison. With Bahrain's state of emergency due to end at the beginning of June, Crown Prince Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa stated Wednesday that the government is committed to reform and that officials would respond to the concerns of both the international community and Bahraini citizens. As safety concerns heighten in Yemen, the UK joined the US in evacuating diplomats, urging nationals to leave immediately, while Qatar suspended her embassy operations. In a fourth day of conflict Thursday, at least 28 Yemeni tribal members were killed in Sana'a as thousands of city residents continued fleeing the violence, which is now spreading beyond the capital. In Syria, security forces killed four people as they opened fire Thursday at hundreds of demonstrators in Deira, demanding the resignation of longtime President Bashar al-Assad. In addition, at least eight more were reportedly killed on Friday during protests in the towns of Katana, Dael, and Zabadan. Meanwhile, leaders of the industrialized Group of Eight, or G8, nations meeting in France issued a joint statement saying that they were appalled at the Syrian government's unabated use of violence, the deaths of protesters, and the repeated and serious violation of human rights. They also vowed to implement additional measures if President al-Assad does not respond with democratic reforms. Libyan Prime Minister al-Baghdadi al-Mahmoudi said Thursday that he was ready for a ceasefire and to hold talks with revolutionaries. Meanwhile, in Miserata Thursday, at least three revolutionaries were killed and 20 others injured in clashes with government forces. As we sympathize with the injured and mourn the loss of precious lives, our prayers continue for a permanent ceasing of all conflicts as people and nations across the globe choose to live in freedom, peace and dignity for all.